My presentation is titled The Nature of Militarization in Okinawa and the New Pacific Pivot. And my presentation has two points. First, for us Okinawans, the New Pacific Pivot is just another rubric under which militarization continues. And the nature of militarization just remains the same. And second point is because this pivot is taking place in the region, that's where Okinawa is located right now. We can see more clearly than before the linkage between economy and the militarizations and the role of Okinawa that we are forced to play in this linkage. And uh, Okinawans don't like this role as a part of the militarizations. This is my, one of the, my favorite pictures of uh, anti-base uh, <laughs> movement in Okinawa. Uh, you can see the banners in the behind and on the fence. That's the fence divide on the beach of Henoko. Over the fence over there, uh, there's a Camp Shua. That's a military base, marine base. And that's where the US and Japanese government are trying to build a new base. And then people put those banners and ribbons and People from all over the world actually come here, visit, and um, decorate the fence, military fence, with these banners and ribbons. And uh, we call this uh, Peace Gallery, or No Base Gallery. And on the front, it's kind of hard to see, but it's a uh, beat up uh, skateboard, somebody put on <laughs> on the beach, and it says Peace and Heiwa. That's a Heiwa means in Japanese, Peace. It's very symbolic of our struggle uh, in Okinawa. We want to have a peace, and we need many other supports from the world to achieve this our goal of making the Okinawa a peaceful land. But I think many of you don't know where Okinawa is, right? And what's Okinawa? Is. <laughs> so I just explain uh, here uh, as uh, Kyle and. Uh, Others talking about, you know, that Okinawa just it's a little, just dots and it's hard to see, and there's a rockway here, and then, so it's kind of far away from uh, your uh, states, and it's pretty close to actually Okinawa is still part of the Japan, but it's close to uh, Taiwan than the mainland Japan. So I want to talk about um, a fact about Okinawa. Again, it's a Japan's southernmost prefecture and 0.6% of the total area of Japan. So it's very tiny, but we got 160 small islands with 1.4 million people living there. Maybe like about, around 40, uh, 40 islands are in here. And we have, as the picture shows here, striving tourism industry right now. Six million tourists visit Okinawa annually because we have a beautiful, beautiful beaches and a nice forest. Uh, but at the same time, now we got chronically high unemployment um, um, and uh, poverty rates compared with uh, Japan's national average. And as the picture above shows, uh, we have a very distinctive and uh, culture and ethnicity is different from uh, mainland Japanese. We consider ourselves of Okinawans uh, first, and uh, our citizenship is a Japanese, but ethnically we are Okinawans. And this is very important for us in terms of understanding the situation between the uh, this uh, situation of the military bases issues in um, Okinawa. Uh, and we have a unique but turbulent history. We got the prospect uh, prospered Ryukyu kingdoms from 15th to 19th century, but we got colonized or annexated, annexation by Japan in the late 19th century, and the militarization by Japan and the U.S. took place from the mid 20th century until today. Okay, so facts about the uh, Okinawa uh, military bases in Okinawa. When we talk about militarization in uh, Okinawa, we always use show this uh, <laughs> map and the facts. 74 percent of U.S. military bases in Japan are concentrated in Okinawa. Remember, only 0.6 percent of the total area of Japan is Okinawa, right? So, about 74 percent of U.S. military bases in Japan are concentrated in Okinawa, and 10 percent of the total area of Okinawa is occupied by U.S. military bases. And here, it's the main island, 
uh, 20% of Okinawa Island, 20% of the total area of Okinawa Island is occupied by U.S. military. And also we have like 50,000 uh, U.S. soldiers and their family slaves. Yeah, of course it's a military base, so uh, we have an extensive military training takes place on the, around the islands. And as you can see on the top, on the left uh, top, it's a uh, Ftema Air Base. It's located in the middle of urban area. You have uh, schools, hospitals, and residential areas, commercial areas. It's very, very dangerous. Um, but also, the base generates five percent of uh, Okinawa's economy, uh, but it's down from fifty percent uh, from uh, from fifty percent in 1972. And we also have a Japan Self Defense Forces here. So why we, why do we have so many bases? You know, so many uh, military bases in Okinawa. Now we have to talk about history of militarization in Okinawa, and and, and they come in a, under the different rubrics, right? Under the rubric of defend the mainland Japan to the death during the World War II, Japan's imperial forces seized the land from Okinawans to build bases and as pre Japan prepared for war with the U.S. and the Allies. And in 1945, then when the war ended, then the Battle of Okinawa, this war shut out the Okinawa. Then when World War II uh, ended, the U.S. military came and uh, took over control of Okinawa and this again seized the, seized the land and converted it into their bases. And 1950s and 60s, that's when, the, under the rubric of the Cold War, the U.S. military government engaged in extensive militarization of Okinawa with the uh, uh, expression of violence and the bulldozers. Uh, then Okinawa became the main forward launching point for U.S. military forces during the Korean War and the Vietnam War. And 1952, you know, that's when the San Francisco Peace oh, Treaty, not the treaty, right? Treaty, okay, sorry. Officially ended the World War II and Japan became independent, but Okinawa remains under the control of the U.S. government, a military government. So, 1972, then we had a reversion of Okinawa to Japan. Uh, Okinawa became part of Japan, but again, the U.S. military bases continue to remain in Okinawa, and Okinawa continue to be the keystone of the Pacific. Very sadly, it took this horrible incident or raping of a 12-year-old girl by three U.S. servicemen that finally the U.S. and Japanese government said, okay, we're going to reduce the burden of military base on Okinawa. So both governments set up the uh, committee called the Special Action Committee on Okinawa, SACO, and their purpose was to reduce the burden on the people of Okinawa and thereby strengthen the Japan-U.S. alliance. That was a very tricky part. I like the top, <laughs> the uh, first part, but thereby strengthen the Japan-U.S. alliance. How they do it, I'll tell you in a minute. And in 1996, uh, 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 a prefectural referendum was passed calling for the reduction of U.S. military presence in the division of uh, SOFA. So this prefectural level referendum was the first prefectural level referendum in Japan ever taken. So in the circle agreements, both governments promised to return some land, I mean some bases and training areas but on these conditions. So they got like three con uh, big conditions. We're going to return some uh, bases, but you have to build a new U.S. military base in Henoko Bay Exchange. And we will return some of the, your forest land and some uh, helipads. Then on the condition, you have to build a new helipads to be constructed in Yambar Forest. And then uh, MV-22 uh, uh, Osprey aircraft to be deployed to Okinawa. In the SACO agreement, this one, that the third uh, condition was dropped because the governments really worried about if we they put this one, kept this one, uh, the protests would be uh, much stronger. So, question is, do you call this a reduction? Reducing the burden? No, I don't think so. <coughs> 
Now, what's happening is this under the new pacific pivot, you know, these plans are now being forced upon Okinawa again. And then the US and Japanese government are trying to show their private, uh, military presence in the regions. Meanwhile, the Chinese and the North Korea governments are increasingly seeing Okinawa as a place where they could take a military action against. And all the while, you know, Okinawa is being militarized. The government, the governments, and large corporations in the regions are making business deals and agreements with each other for profit. So you can see the linkage between militarization and economy. So why, why, what is Okinawa's role? To be bombarded? <laughs> to become the victim of militarization? I think it's unjust and that's unfair. And we have a protest rallies. 100,000 people came to rally. And we had a sit-in protest at base gates. What else we can do? You know? Then what's happened? Plane came. And I see tears in the people who are doing sitting. The day, at the moment, Osprey landed on the Ftema base. Disregard for the safety and the life of the local people and communities. Since 1972, since the reversion, more than 5,700 crimes have been committed, and many of the crimes are not prosecuted because of the SOFA. Where is our peace? Distortion of local economy and development, base economy, land lease money, government subsidies for housing bases, base towns. We have those things but they are not really generating um, money for the local people. And the presence of military bases, because it's 20% of the Okinawa land, island is being occupied by military base. There are not much land left for development. So what's happened was reclamation of the coastal areas. So how can we break away from the cycle of different, uh, dependence? And then we have distraction and contamination of the environment. In the, our situation, very accountability is very elusive. U.S. bases in Japan, foreign bases, sovereign nation. This basing ar arrangement gives the U.S. and Japanese government leeway to avoid responsibilities. But Okinawa's fight against militarization for peace, con uh, for peace continues. We do sit-ins, we take the case to the U.S. court, and as uh, we go to the IUCN, International um, Union Conservation of Nature, we take the issue there, and we take the issues to human rights um, commissions. So we keep trying to do lots of things, try to make the governments accountable. I think my time is up, right? Okay, right, I think, uh, right, that's my presentation.